Hello everybody, this short video is about advertising and it discusses the topic of advertising from the perspective of critical and cultural analysis. Advertising is all around us. This is true in the literal sense that most people encounter advertising messages on a frequent basis throughout their daily lives and across multiple media. Not only are these messages all around us, but they also appear in an immersive, multi-sensory way. You see a billboard ad while you hear a radio ad, which reminds you of the digital ad you just saw this morning. But advertising is all around us in an even more fundamental way, existing as a kind of template for other forms of daily interaction. Some people have said that all mass media is basically a form of advertisement. The point of a television series is not ultimately the show itself, but the ads that pay for the show. That is, while we typically think of ads on TV or online as the annoying sideshow that you have to endure to get to the content, from an economic perspective, the content is actually the filler, and the ads are the whole point. So even while you're enjoying your content, you're actually being advertised to. This is part of what is meant by the idea that all mass media is basically a form of advertisement, but it is also the case, some argue, so the same dynamics that inform advertising strategies also have come to shape the kind of content produced by filmmakers, storytellers, musicians, and YouTubers. In a classical, idealistic mode, art and self-expression are motivated by the urge to communicate basic, sometimes uncomfortable, or even tragic truths about human reality. In the age of advertising, however, the only truth that survives is the necessity of getting people's attention. If all human creativity is subject to this principle, the nature of art and human self-expression themselves are reinvented as sales strategies and publicity stunts. Throughout human history, art and storytelling have told us who we are and provided us with our models for humanity and subjectivity. If it is true that in the context of mass media, art and narrative have gone commercial, emptying themselves of humanist content in favor of staging eye-catching spectacles that basically replace subjectivity with the orbital tautology of a text that operates entirely as an advertisement for itself, then who will tell us who we are and how to be human beings? A person raised in such a culture may reasonably conclude that all of human life is a kind of advertisement for oneself, and that the purpose of life is not to be a human being, but to be a brand. And of course, it is easy to find a generation of self-help gurus who are eager to tell you how to market yourself, how to develop a consistent and recognizable persona that will help sell yourself to college admission boards, would-be employers, and romantic partners. In this sense, it might be said that advertising is not only all around us, it is inside us, not only filling our dreams with products that promise to make us happier, but also structuring the way we think about ourselves and the world around us. For all of these reasons, it is worthwhile to subject advertising, and particular advertisements, to critical scrutiny. The semantic structure of advertisements can be represented as a three-part pyramid, with blatant content, or the explicit message at the top, manifest content providing the bulk of what you see and hear when you engage with an advertisement, and the latent content representing the base of the pyramid, the tacit ideology or deeper meanings that the advertisement conveys. Latent content refers to an ad's explicit message. Because advertisements are messages, they have what we might call blatant content. This is the message that constitutes the goal of the ad itself. Buy this brand of soap. Vote for this candidate. Talk to your doctor today about the latest pill. The blatant content of an ad presents itself as the ad's main point and central meaning, but it does not exhaust the ad's meaning. That is to say, an ad, like any form of communication, expresses a lot more than simply its main message, and indeed, sometimes the main message is actually less important than the atmosphere, the world, or the vibe of the ad. Indeed, sometimes the main point of an ad can even be thought of as a kind of red herring a false clue intended to distract you while the ad's more vital meanings seep their way into the audience's subconscious. Manifest content refers to the ad's representation of reality. The blatant meaning of an ad is always embedded in a representation of some human reality, whether it's a dramatized situation of the family dog knocking over a glass of juice, a smiling nurse staring out from a billboard, or even just the expressive quality of a certain font or word choice in the text of an ad. This is what you see or hear when you encounter an ad, 
the physical details of human faces and bodies and language, and this sensual surface can be referred to as the manifest content of the ad, the story it tells, the reality it depicts, the representation of human behavior and values that is on display in the ad. Examining the manifest content of an ad means looking closely at nuances that a casual viewer might not consciously recognize at first, what people are wearing, the details of their environment, their facial expressions, the camera angles, the use of music and audio effects. When most people see an ad, they consciously register the ad's blatant content, but they typically register the manifest content in a much more indirect way. They might not consciously notice that the woman in the ad is wearing designer jeans and an expensive blouse, but they will come away with a general impression that she is upper middle class. They might not notice the particular quality of smile on her face, but they will get the impression that she is a good mom, although one who also sometimes feels harassed and overwhelmed. Audiences might not consciously perceive many of the other hundreds of details that advertising personnel spend weeks of intense effort agonizing over. The details all serve the function of building some kind of world. What world are they building? A world that reflects their audience's own perception of their lived experience? A world that serves as a kind of escapist fantasy from their perception of their lived experience? A world that advertisers want their target audience to envy and imagine themselves as deficient in relation to? The manifest content of different ads may represent variations and blends of all of these differently skewed representations of reality. But even as they distort reality in all of these different ways, Advertisements also become a part of our reality, one of the ways we know who we are supposed to be and how we are supposed to behave. The prevalence of ads in our daily lives enables them to have an outsized effect on our own expectations. Even as we know we are being manipulated by ads, one might also feel an irrational yet compelling inclination to sympathize with the representation of reality depicted in an ad. Latent content, finally, refers to the tacit ideology implied by an advertisement's manifest content. Our subterranean emotional and largely unconscious response to advertising imagery is connected to the third, deepest, and most significant level of meaning, this latent content. Blatant content is in your face. Manifest content is right before your eyes. But latent content is between the lines, beneath the surface of the manifest content and influencing consciousness in ways that elude conscious awareness. Here is an ad that I found randomly by googling print ads. It is an ad for a brand of cologne, Old Spice, and the blatant content of the message is that wearing this cologne will make men more manly. The manifest content is the image itself, a man riding in an elevator, but surreally split in half into a chubby, Christmassy outer part and a bare-chested inner muscle man. Details in the image imply cultural stereotypes about masculinity. The inner male self is muscular, scowling, militarized, intimidating, dirty. He's a master of nature, as can be inferred through his relationship with the snake, and technology, the cell phone taped to his chest. Meanwhile, the other half of the image portrays the outer shell of the civilized man, clad in fuzzy Christmas clothes, smiling a big goofy smile, considerably heavier, and holding a set of Old Spice products. By the time we start examining the manifest content of this image, we are already gravitating toward an analysis of the latent content. Here, the latent content of this ad is the project of defining and structuring masculinity. The imagery associated with the inner man is intended to be humorous and over-the-top, he appears to be eating a bowl of macaroni and firecrackers, but this humor disguises a very serious anxiety about the nature of masculinity. The humor is funny because it speaks to a common attitude that inner masculinity, true manliness, is characterized by a kind of gleeful violence and carelessness. The modern outer man, by contrast, appears superficial, cartoonish, and vaguely pathetic. The implication is that any decency, empathy, or self-care that men engage in is effeminate, unnatural, and illusory. At the same time, it also suggests the idea that even if you are a chubby dork riding in an elevator, you have an inner man within you, a Rambo Tarzan kernel of identity that is your true self. You have the soul of a killer. That is your real identity. That is the definition of true masculinity and true male identity. An old spice is an enchanted potion that can magically restore a fet and desperate pseudo-men to their Edenic status as masters of the planet.
The viewer of the ad is intended to accept and endorse all of these meanings at a semi-conscious level. Maybe they were already half convinced that this picture of reality is true with all of its entailments, that masculinity is defined by buffoonery and violence rather than by wisdom and emotional intelligence, that masculinity is an elemental fact of reality rather than a construct that is negotiated by human societies, that the soul of man is an isolated, indeed invisible ideal buried in the self and alone in an elevator rather than an emergent spectrum of possibilities that forms itself through relationships with other people. In reinforcing and naturalizing these kinds of ideas, the latent content of advertisements probably does more than any other cultural force to shape our understanding of human reality. Because ads try to appeal to audiences by depicting an idealized, romanticized, simplified, and dehistoricized representation of reality, the latent content of ads tends to encode attitudes and values that mirror, in a kind of funhouse, decontextualized way, attitudes close to the heart of their target audiences. Analyzing the latent content of advertisements, that is, not only teaches us about the nature of advertising, it can also be a path into examining the unconscious values that undergird the self-awareness of the society that consumes them.